the uh, great Pumi Mashiko sitting right opposite me. Hello, Pums. Hello, Bebe. How are you? <laughs> How's your third What a figure? mad rush this morning. Yes, sis. Yes. Uh, Pumi, Pumi and I arrived before James, who'd overslept, and then uh, we couldn't find the key. <laughs> you know. Uh, you so, know. Yeah, sorry, we're like we were like two minutes late. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We got here though. Sorry, we, are, we made it happen. Mara, look at us. And we are expecting to have quite a lot to do in the show this morning. There's a lot happening. The got a burning platform a bit later on at Kenneth Meshwear from the ACDP. What else is new? A lot happening. What else is new? Well, I don't know if you've seen what's been going on in uh, Itekwini. I know you haven't had you haven't had power since when? Since 4 p.m. yesterday. Uh, Still no power. So what did hmm. you do for supper? Oh no! I've you have I've plans? Got backup. I've got backup. I've got. What a, do you do? I've got a gas stove. Ah, very smart. So I can cook. Okay. I have. Um, but but uh, yeah, we've got a gas stove. Gas stove. So okay, that was a very uh, unnecessarily complicated explanation for your no, gas stove. It's just um, I, I do not have a gas stove, so I rely on delivery. But Oy. I suddenly, but I suddenly realized yesterday how expensive this gets if you do it like twice in a week. And I suddenly thought, ah, oh, okay, well, now I know where some of my <laughs> non existent money is going. <laughs> right? You know who yeah. else just realized how expensive takeout is? Who? Young Canejo. <laughs> oh, right. Did he? <laughs> He's just he got no more money. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know what's happening. Then there's like, because they get, he, I, I see on the app when he asks for Uber Eats, mm. and I, he can see how that thing is adding up. I'm telling you. Because they've had lots of like choir Is practice, he, and so he misses meals. supper. He misses supper, whatever. I don't know what he misses, but whatever it is. But point is, well, uh, you, lesson learned. If you if you do it like once a month, it's fine. But if you are going to rely on that more than that, uh, you you end up it costs you a lot. But you know. I've been not eating meat because of the... Yes, you've been on, what is Lent? You've, you've decided Lent. to give up meat, yeah? Yeah, but you, and that requires you to prepare. That requires you to prepare, prepare your meals, be well, because what I then realized is we don't have a lot of vegetarian options. Yeah. In the shops or no, take out. Oh, take so out. if, oh, I, right, if right, I work right. late, usually yeah. you're working late, mm -hmm. then you just drive home, you go past a McDonald's or past a KFC or whatever. We don't have a lot of no, we don't options. And, and I mean, my go-to, I have to and to give him credit because we often talk about this stuff. My go-to for anything like healthy is probably Kauai. Mm. You know, and then I'll get a wrap with like uh, some sort of veggie thing in it. Yeah, that's good. Mm. That does me in. I'm fine. Yeah. So the I'm alright with that. The good news is because I am in in a very central place because our office is in Rosebank. There's mm. lots of like Options. food things, but it closes early, and oh, it's just it's so. Lu Louis says just to confirm, Pumi has a gas stove. <laughs> la le la 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 le la la. Louis, ah. we've already ah. said. So I, I have. <laughs> I have two disclaimers this morning if I'm okay. a little bit slow. The Go first on. one is I've been up since about quarter to three. Oh. I just, it was too hot. Couldn't it was sleep. it was so warm last night. Jesus. It, it, but you'll be regretting that. Uh, you'll be waiting for summer again in a couple of weeks' time. You know how quickly winter dawns. I, I saw again a video of a friend of mine from Canada. He was walking his baby, pushing his baby in a pram. In Some, the snow. In the snow, and I thought you poor son of a bitch, because it's March, which means it should start thawing out there. It shouldn't be that cold. But yeah, then it is Canada. But to, the the weather app says today is going to be six degrees. Thank you, brother James. Very good. Um, the weather app says today is going to be six degrees cooler than yesterday. So where? But I I, 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 I like don't that. care what What's I don't your... care what. Anybody says Johannesburg 
has got the best weather in the world. So you know, how even I, when it's cold. I know that's true, right? Because I was in Cape Town yesterday and um, flew back, and when we got off the plane, there was like this this warm thing that happened. Cape Town is already starting to develop a little bit of a chilly edge at a night. Bite. Yeah, at night you don't want to be um, you don't want to be around without like long sleeves. Mm, it's starting. Johannesburg, even even in deep winter, you can still be outside and there's blue sky and there's the sun. All right, but you and know on what a the, good you, day, you can be in the You know what they say? They say boring people talk about the weather. So there's going to be a clue for that. I want to ask you, though, if, when you sleep, mm-hmm. what is your ideal temperature? Because I've heard it's all nonsense. Everybody should be able to sleep at virtually any temperature. If your body's tired, you should go to sleep. But no. I do have a friend and she cannot sleep except at fridge temperatures <laughs> she it's got to be like sub 18 well, degrees celsius otherwise she can't sleep it does have to be cool it does yeah. have to be cool in the room but i am one of those people that no matter how hot it is i need a little bit of a something like a little a sheet or a little blankie or something mm. i can't sleep without a covering no matter how hot it is I need to sleep with the covering, but it needs to be cool. It needs to be like the well, temperature needs to be down. I see Mapello saying, I've never had load shedding for days. Uh, thanks to the municipality strike, small winds, but some people have had power since th- ne- have not had power since Thursday. No yeah, ways. listen, this uh, it's a strike. It's a nonsense. Oof, it's nonsense. Bad. Yeah, it's not a strike. It's like sabotage and vandalism of the most disgusting kind. I mean, mm. it just looks like an absolute disaster in Itekbini at the moment. And apparently the mayor is just knee deep and doesn't know what to do. Council's completely useless. MK parties involved. EFF are involved. It's just like, it's total chaos. And now, and, and invariably when this starts happening, you see people comparing, right? So you have them saying like, this is Durban five years ago. This is Durban 10 years ago. This is Durban 15 years ago. And you see Durban has declined steadily since, I wouldn't say that, I think the 90s, it was still cool. I think it was still fine there in the 90s. In fact, there was a lot of, of improvement. I mean, things, they've got that beautiful uh, beachfront and promenade, which I think is... Even, even, even not so long ago. Even near even, uh, Ushaga Marine World, there was some nice stuff that was going on even there. Even five years ago. You know, even five years, five ago. years ago. But you have seen a, a really terrible decline now. and. I just feel for people who've invested their life and their savings and their businesses and they've put their their entire existence into a place like that. And the whole place is just going downhill at a rate of knots. And you see, you, this, is, this is how you know when, when nobody is paying attention. There's no one at the wheel. Mm-hmm. There's really, there's no one driving. There's no. not, not at, at the municipal level, not at the national level. Certainly not in the governing party no. level, because th- that's where that's where the wheels come off. There's nobody kind of holding people accountable. There's huh? nobody. There's no grown ups. There's no grown ups in the room. But you would think in an election year they'd get their act together, but they obviously are so. Yay. No, no, they're so useless and thin on the ground and incompetent that they can't even in an election year pull themselves together. So they're relying on. I think they're, not they're, they're relying on what? Concentrating. So you think that they're just waiting to see what happens? I think they. I mean, I don't think they are waiting to see what happens. I think they are concentrating on all the wrong things. Well, uh, it is the dystopian future playing out. Says huge reaction with a very positive spin on this morning. I saw uh, he started the show by saying, "What's so good about it?" When I said good morning, so clearly having a bit of a rough day there, Hugh. But it's okay. We all have those. Uh, Honorable Dipsy says we are on day two of zero water in the Vusrand. That's the West Rand. <laughs> People who don't know. Yeah, listen, this this idea, and I said to Pumi, it's like people are just getting, they're getting beyond the point of being like beside themselves with rage. It's now got to the stage where people are actually in that frightening, I might just lash out at any moment stage, which, Everybody is, which is beyond is lashing out though. where you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you noticed how people have short fuses everywhere? Everywhere. Traffic. People have short fuses in the traffic, in the shops, in the, everybody is just 
just tense. a little bit tense and on edge. And it's not it's not ordinary people's fault. I mean, I see now that the petrol price is going to go up some more. I will. Yeah, yeah. Is so, that today's news? Well, no, no, no. But here's here's oh. the whole thing. So we're feeling the pinch at the pump. They put up the petrol price hugely over the last decade, right? So in 2014, a liter of petrol cost you 10 rand. Today it's 20 rand. It's doubled. I mean, my maths is great, right? That's a 100% increase. The cost of DSTV has gone up significantly in 2014. The cheapest DSTV package cost 100 rand a month. Today, it's 200 a month. So that's another 100% increase. In 2014, a Big Mac cost you 20 rand. Ooh, I went to McDonald's with the kids. Yeah, with, and? With, with, my, uh, with Zotile, my uh, niece and Kanejo uh -huh. on Friday night. Mm -hmm. I was... Actually, I, I, I was taken aback. Prices. I was taken aback. I did not. Because you, you don't see, you don't yeah. think it's... And you don't pay attention to those little increments. But if you look at over 10 years, which is why I'm doing this exercise. So in 2014, it cost you 20 rand. Now it's 30 rand, which is a 50% increase. It's important to note these price increases are not as severe when taking inflation into account. When adjusted for inflation, the price of petrol has actually only increased by around 20% over the past decade. Overall, the cost of so living. So it did go up. You see, Sandy Le here in the comments is saying that the petrol price did go up. At yeah, it did. Night. It went up yesterday. Aye, yeah. guys. <laughs> but we talked about that. I'm, was, I'm, I'm looking at, at like over 10 years because that's, that's when you see it. I was completely distracted though yesterday. Completely by? distracted by all of the, the goings on on social media. Like what? Like, listen, yesterday. What? What's been happening? <laughs> <laughs> Fill me in. I was so busy yesterday. I didn't even touch sides. I literally got home uh, at seven o'clock and I, I went to bed. Yeah, because you were in Cape Town. Uh, anyway, what did I miss? You missed, they, there's a, a, a tour. Do they still call it a tour? Mm, now sure. That it's X? Sure, we can call it a tour. Between uh, Mashaba and Malema. Oh, God. Yep. Yep. It's going down. There, there was um, for a day and a half. There's been this apology letter by Naledi Chira. Mm. You know about that, right? Mm. So that completely, so she came out swinging kind of at the end of the day two days ago. And yesterday she was in a full-on tour with uh, Tessa Dwims from Ravonia Circle. Right. Which was shocking to say the least. All the people who were standing up for her, because we all thought that letter was a little bit of a, Blink twice if you're in trouble. Are you being held against your will? <laughs> right? We all did. We all did. It wasn't just Tessa. And then kind of at about 7 p.m. last night, Julius Malema tweeted basically saying my lady was out of line. And if, if we have to choose between an individual and our party, and the movement, we will choose the movement. So a, a very public, like, bitch slap for Naledi after she was... So what's the story there? I mean... ...fighting everybody about everyone getting it wrong and all the people so I saw, that see it as a cry for help. Yeah, I saw a bunch of um, tweets yesterday, uh, during the day, though, about how in the EFF, uh, basically, if you're a member of the EFF, they can tell you what to do with any income you, you have. Like yeah. if they, so if you're a member of parliament or whatever, they, the, the party bosses get first dibs at your money. I do, so I, I don't that know right? what the, I don't know Jesus. if that's completely right, but it's I like do a slave know camp. that they are a bit of a gulag. Yeah, it is. Know that they, have right? a whole, they have a whole set of stuff. Like you have to, you have to buy a van because you must be available to help people in the community. Yeah, you know, I don't know what a van does, but with a van. Yeah, well, more um, people. You that, right. If you you have to, they also have to um, give a portion of their salary back to the party as part of the running costs of the party. Good so old communism going on there. Text right. back to the party. And what is the third thing? There is a third thing that I'm not remember right ring right now so i i don't know if the, like they they have first dips well but they I, I mean it sounds to me like possibly might. you don't get to do what you want to do if you're a member of that party you you are everything is subject to the party yeah so it's it's like good old you know it's 1943 stalin 
That's what it is. At least they're 1953, 19, even up to the 60s in, in Soviet Russia. They've learned from their, uh, the, the losing side in the Cold War. They always I, choose, I choose the losers. Are, at least they are consistent. Yeah, but okay. So if you work for the EFF, if you're on the party list and you're an MP, they'll tell you what car to buy. They'll tell you what to do with a certain proportion of your, a quite big proportion of your salary. Um, and, and there are a whole lot of other rules too. But of course, All very I'm much saying, like Animal Farm. Yes, some are more equal than others. Yeah, so I mean, that doesn't apply to like Floyd and Julius and Buiseni. They, they can buy. So someone pointed out that Julius was wearing a, a jacket the other day, which costs like 50,000 rand or something. Oh, I'm always, did you see that? I did not see that, but I'm always mm. astounded at how people know these things. How they'll just say, you know those moccasins? They cost this. They cost, and I'm like, how do you know this? What boggles my mind, right, is that if people are going to behave like this when this is the control they have over their own party, this gives you an, a glimpse of what they would be like if they were in charge of the country or even a municipality. They would impose these rules on all of us and think that we would all be very happy to accept them. Mm. So this is the kind of world. And again, like I try not to look at the comments on Twitter because I see. I mean, but that's where all the fun is. I don't know so much, hey. Like <laughs> often with political stuff, I'll see some of the comments. First of all, there is not a literate person on X anymore. You can complete a full sentence. I might no in the comments. In the comments, I'm not talking about people who post stuff. I'm talking about people who reply to I, posts. I post nothing. I just yes, watch. Us. <laughs> I, I, honestly, and you go in there, it's just depressing. You think, wow, our education system really is shit. Um, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull uh, comments now because I, I don't have like any interest in sc scrolling through just mindless stuff. If, believe me, it's, it's just, it's puerile. It's like, <laughs> yes, this, this is the, these are the people who are participating in conversation Everything. around <laughs> politics. I'm like, they shouldn't even be participating in conversation, full stop. Oh. They should pick up a book or two, but that's besides the point. If, if a party runs itself on the basis that we are hearing the EFF does. So this, this is the thing that I think for a lot of people, when we saw the letter that Naledi put out, which, you know, on, on, the, on the surface of it, it sounds like a good thing, right? She didn't come to... Whatever she wasn't there on a on the day of the budget, yeah. Um, and the party felt that as a public representative, you must be accountable to the public as to why you're sure. not showing up for work. Great, right? It's on the on the surface, this sounds sure. sounds like a good thing. People must be held accountable. Sure, showing up to Especially work, politicians showing don't. up to work is the bare That's minimum. A, absolutely. But then when we read what was in it 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 kept it kept getting more and more bizarre you know it was like okay so you didn't show up to the the non-hybrid part but you were at the hybrid part this you told the wrong person who didn't tell the right person on your behalf mm. you have a four-month-old baby and they were sick and this is why you weren't there and this is now why you are having to apologize okay you didn't take your maternity leave. You you left late. You came back early. Mm. You're now sending your child off to go stay with with the grandmother so that you can. Now you have to buy gazebos. Like it was so many things. And every time we're just like, what? what? Please, what? 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 Yeah. Right. The workers' party treats its workers like this. Mm -hmm. This this was all of the stuff that we were all kind right. of like going through. And then to see the way that everybody responded to it and all the EFF people, because you know there's an EFF line, right? So the EFF people follow the line. So, mm -hmm. no, well done, apology accepted. Rah, 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 rah. And all the people who were kind of going, eh, but this this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. This doesn't sound right. This, the, you, this can't be the way that you want to treat 
people within your party. And if this is how you treat people within your party, good God, how what are we in for when you are, mm. <laughs> right? And then the backlash of the bots to those people. How dare you come here and tell us how to run our party? <laughs> when you say bots, you actually mean people that they behave like bots. I, I don't know. I never know if these are real people because some of those comments... Some of those comments, Garrett, I'm just like, are you for real right now? Are you a real person mm. thinking this? Yes. And then Naledi came on and she seems to have also done a, a bit of a backflip that says, maybe what I, you know, now, now she's kind of backtracking and fighting everybody about everything that's been said. And then. It's like they we're getting a little insight, okay? So, so what we're getting to do is we're getting to see uh, up the dress of the EFF, and it's not a pretty sight. It's really not an attractive sight at all. It's got to be, uh, it's got to be a warning shot across the bows to anyone who would vote for them. And I, I very much doubt that that many people in our audience. Of course, I'm supposing that there might be some EFF supporters who listen to us. You never know. I, I, I think they do. I, I think, think they, I they think do they are. because I, mean, I, I have a, a pretty good gauge of who's listening because I get quite a lot of backlash. Oh, you do? For about a day and a half after, after the show. After every show? After every show. Okay, but you've uh, the weirdest thing about Pumi, right, is like you're just a lightning rod for all kinds of uh, anger. For some reason, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because you're opinionated because you don't take nonsense from politicians. People don't like my laugh. The, People didn't like my Afro all last the reasons, week. That's why I'm wearing a duke. All the reasons I want you on the show seem to be all the reasons that someone has a problem with you. So when Pumi criticizes the ANC, <laughs> then people attack her. When she criticizes the DA, people attack her. When she criticizes the EFF, people attack her. When she goes after Herman Mashaba last week, um, which is your know, job. Which I did not, but it is but your, I think people yes, must understand this is not a going after of anyone. It's a simply it's a, an inquiring mind. You, I'm just quite interested. In fact, if you compare Pumi's questions across like the I'm last four or five weeks of pol political leaders, you almost ask them all very fair questions like, what are your top three priorities? And they get a chance to answer you. I'm interested, guys. Right. But for a day and a half. So I can tell you for free, there are lots of EFF people listening to this show. There are lots of, um, who else? There, there are lots of Patriotic Alliance people who listen to the show. Mm. Everybody listens to this show, guys. Yeah, I think we've got a nice mix. That's <laughs> Just why subscribe and like. And and, and yeah, subscribe and like, but at the same time, and we're not gonna ask you to vote for us in any election. So the least you can do. But um we are we're trying to bring you all the different people and let you choose whoever you think is the best. But I don't think I don't think people are prepared to look at the detail here. And when something like this comes out, it lets you know what's actually happening. And this is about the quality of the character of the people who want to lead you. So also, today, there's a, there's a big press conference outside mm. the IEC offices, Musa, mm. Musi Maimane, mm. and, and his, his top brass. He's uh, failed to get enough signatures. Uh, what makes you think that? I don't understand <laughs> what's wrong with you people. I don't, I, I don't understand why. The way, this is the other thing that kept me awake, just reading all of the comments of all the people thinking that the man's going to be rolling over. He's not. He's not going to roll over. He's going to come out there. He's going to tell you who his premier candidates are. Why, if he if he was indeed going to to kind of capitulate, <laughs> if he was, why would he? Why would he have a press conference? Why wouldn't he not just send a a, a note like Roger Jardin did? Because it's become a thing. Nikki Haley dropped out of the presidential race yesterday. Oh. In in. New York, oh. right? She announced that she's no longer going to be running for president. And oh. she, she stopped short of throwing her support behind Donald Trump and said he must earn our support. But he'll probably make her a VP pick anyway. That's probably what's going to happen. I, oh, well, I think she might have to slug it out with oh, Vivek. Probably. I think he thinks he's going to be the VP pick. I don't think he's going to be, but I think he, I think that's why he dropped out so early and was so like, 
magnanimous about it. I think so. And and isn't this an interesting situation that we've got in the U.S.? The party that um, that that uh, the Democrats assure us is so full of racism is 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 choosing a VP, and and we we're just speculating here between two people of immigrant. Asian American origin. It's fantastic. <laughs> Don't tell me that the world isn't improving. Don't call America a racist country. <laughs> right? Already had their black president. They'll probably have more in the future. Got some uh, candidates lining up behind the Republican candidate as vice president. People of color in inverted commas. I hate that terminology. And, uh, and we think that uh, America's, you know, deeply, deeply... Uh, imbued with all kinds of very bigoted ideas and backwards. Oh, come on, do me a favor. Um, Brian says, Pumi is so smart and cool. See, Pums, there are people who appreciate you. I like that radio <laughs> on your bookshelf. These are our friends. <laughs> it's that on your bookshelf, Pums. Ta-da! <laughs> the, these are our friends. But <laughs> Rapilwe, I admire her. The inquisitive in, inquisitiveness in her opens our eyes on politics. Yes, I agree with that. G- l- I am very excited for tomorrow because tomorrow is the deadline. You know this, right? Tomorrow is the deadline for all the signatures. Okay. So how many do they need now? Because they've changed the rules. There's, I I actually, I had, uh, I will tell you because it's actually a lot of, it's, it's very different per province, per this. Um, let me see if I can find it. And, uh, very sad, you know, who did drop out is the Cape independent. Ah, oh, well, well, they never had a hope in hell anyway, did they? I, I, I don't know. They, uh, they just, they didn't get enough signatures. Uh, they only got 200 of the 7,000 that they need. Let me tell you, if you want to secede from the, the, the Republic, you're going to need more than 200 signatures. <laughs> It's a bit of a damp squib. <laughs> that that puts that puts okay, paid. So here's the that puts paid to any of those people who've been saying, "Ah, Cape Independence is a real thing." Remember, we spoke to that dude last year. So this Phil this is, Craig, <laughs> Roman said, "Yeah, it was like Cape Independence." Yeah, Roman. Like, yeah, how's that going for you guys? So here's the number. This is what it looks like. So to contest for seats. For the National Assembly, yes. you, in the Eastern Cape, you need 11,656 signatures. Is that because they're less literate in the Eastern I Cape and not enough people can sign no, their names? No, these numbers, <laughs> Karat, man, Karat, don't be that person. These numbers <laughs> are right. linked to the last no, the last voters' <clears> roll. <throat> so okay. not this right, voters' right, roll, right. the last cool. voters' roll. Go on. In the Free States, you need 11,340 signatures. Mm-hmm. In Gauteng, you need 13,890 signatures. All right. In KwaZulu-Natal, you need 13,040. Hmm. In Limpopo, you need 11,329. Mm-hmm. Mpumalanga, 11,924. Northern Cape, 10,271. Northwest, 10,000. I hope somebody's sitting here with the calculator. <laughs> well, you want me to work out the average? <laughs> no, not the average, the total number. So starting again, 11,656. This is all right. 11,330. Mm-hmm. 13,890. Mm-hmm. 13,40. So 040. 11,329. 11,924. 10,271. 10652, that's Northwest, and Western Cape 13201. So these are the numbers. All right, so if you want to take part in the national in the election. national elections, 107, 293. Okay, so you need over 107,000 signatures if you want to but participate wait, nationally. there's more. Oh. <laughs> because oh. if you also want to but premier don't, candidates. Uh, don't South Africans love signing um, forms? We uh, love we'll sign know. forms, will we? Do they? I think we do. I don't think we know. Uh, I think let's go for it. And this is this is yeah. where the seven thousand um seven thousand one hundred and seventy-six is what you need to be on the provincial ballot in the Western Cape. All right. Uh which is the most. No, no, it's not the most. Kauteng is the most, it's eight seven five six to be on the provincial ballot. So if you want to put it up a premier candidate, if you want to put up people for the legislature, also the <laughs> Party list. Yes, are they out yet? Party list. Are they out? The deadline is tomorrow. Oh, then we'll have something to talk about there because that's going to be exciting, right? What? See who's who on the... No, no, because that tells you who really wields power in the parties. (laughs) 
who is actually so guess who i discovered that gayton mckenzie is not number one on the party list in the patriotic alliance well, but he is the premier candidate for the Western Cape. I'm, but he's not number one on the party list. Who is? I'll tell you now. I've never heard of this guy before. That's because what so people... Be, before I'll before Gayton, before Gayton, I think very few people actually knew about the Patriots. His name is Alliance. Charles Sillier. Charles Sillier. Charles Sillier. That's the, that's the number one on the Patriotic Alliance's list. Well, as far as the last list went. But it wasn't Gayton. So sometimes you see the list and you go, wow, that guy's up there at number three. And then you realize he has much more influence than you thought. So this is why the party lists matter, right? Because we, okay, so for people who don't know, um, I'm going to be very, very basic. For those of you who do, I'm sorry, this is maybe a bit- uh, Just go with us, go with us. A bit patronizing. Yeah. So here it is. The, each party is required to sub submit a list for as long as they believe they will get places. So if the list is a thousand people, that's because you believe you will be placing a thousand people in important positions across the country. From president of the republic, right the way through to premier of this, um, councillor here, wherever you may be, right? You've got basically everyone who works for the party who's officially nominated to a place on that list could be put into a position somewhere in government. And they then will arrange that list in order of how much weight, power, in order of importance, how big your constituency is, how much influence you wield, it how much money you bring in. In order of importance. And each party has their own mechanism for working on this. So it'll, <laughs> it'll also give you insight into how the party regards those people, right? Absolutely. So that's interesting. And and also because there are only 400 seats in yes. the National Assembly. Right. It also tells you who is most likely going to be in there, who's going yeah, to make correct. it to parliament. It's it is all it is all quite wonderful and fascinating. Uh so honestly. so the Northern Cape can't need more than 200 if we're doing it by population <laughs> so slippery pickle. Maybe the Maybe they Guys, can succeed. Guys, but don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> there are only 200 people in the Northern Cape, right? Not don't that many rude. people. Uh, Hadmin says, be careful. Gareth can't do maths. It won't end well. Yeah, but listen, I used my we had a calculator. I used my calculator, Hadmin. Give me a chance. Oh, for me, look what I did. I dropped my phone yesterday. Yo. Look, it's cracked. You know, I was telling somebody about how much your phone gives me anxiety because Gareth is the only person I know who does not have a protector for his phone no protector for your phone and he's so tall so his phone's got a far the gravity will, the it's gravity got will a long get me. distance to fall it'll get me eventually <laughs> so i think the the lists that i'm most interested in just to go back to that for a second are a and c because we want to see who's really you know, so on Sunday we did wake up to the, the Sunday papers. Wow. On Sunday we did wake up to the the Sunday papers telling us that the the integrity committee committee yeah. in the ANC yes. has come back with the people who <laughs> the should ANC's, not be on the list. The in ANC's integrity committee. Yeah, who Listen, who pays attention to them? You know who who should not be on the list, who? and it will be interesting to see. There are a hundred names yes, on the yes, list yes. that says these people should not be. Everyone from I mean, if, Zwelim Kize. Let me tell you, if the ANC, <laughs> this is the funniest thing, right? If the ANC's integrity committee is saying that you shouldn't be on a list, that means you should have been in jail 10 years ago. But you know who, who yes. is not on the list that says Paul Mashatile? Mm, the has, deputy president. He, he, has, he, he has survived the integrity commission's list. Amazing. Uh, Gwede Mandashe mm -hmm. has survived. Of course, because he's, he's squeaky list. clean. We know that. Um, Inok Kodongwane uh, okay. has survived. Okay. Well, I didn't really. I'm not surprised by that. You think he's rotten to the core? What call? are you talking about? The man. The, do you remember the small, the small Anyana skeleton of missing money from a... Do you not know this about what? missing money no. from, a, from a union... Oh, for me, you, you, now you're nitpicking. I, uh, In the ANC, this is small fry. When, uh, when, bit uh, of, what, a little bit of missing union money? You know, Kodongwana is like basically squeaky clean compared to everyone else if that's all he took. When, uh, Come when, uh, on. You're very unfair. You know, you expect the ANC to be better than, than, than all the other humans on earth. They're not gods, Pumi. Your standards are too high. <laughs> 
all I'm saying is there's a lot of reading that we're going to have to do this weekend. There's a, this weekend is going to be very, very interesting. Right. Also, also, will the MK get the requisite number of signatures? Yes, again, because how many people in the in MK actually have a signature? Will Duduzan, <laughs> Will Duduzan and his all change all, makers, all game all changers, game changer, whatever it's game called. changing, Baba, game changing, uh, game changing. <laughs> he was. I saw a stupid video of him yesterday. In fact, it came to me this morning while I was waking up. Now, what a horrible, rude awakening that is to uh, have someone send you a video of Duduzan talking about like how cannabis should be a major. Like he's talking about what we spoke about 10 years ago. It's like he's just woken up to some of these things. He was so busy embezzling money in Dubai that he hasn't been paying any attention to the South African economy. So there's this video of him with his cap on backwards and an all game changers shirt on. And he's saying, oh, we, we must definitely find a way to incorporate. His cap is what? The back, well, it's backwards. <laughs> uh, ass, bass, backwards. Um, and he's saying, we must find a way to use this plant as a cash crop in the Eastern Cape. And we're like, but that's already happening, dude. And he's talking about the value of cannabis oil, all this sort of shit. And I'm like, what are you like? Did you just wake up from 2014? Because that was something we already were. It was on the go. There are people who are already like tycoons and kingpins in that arena, growing weed on a massive scale. You got to be kidding me. He's just realized this now. Oh, no. Do you know he was busy before? What? <laughs> Max Sony says he's a dumbass. He's been high for the last 10 years. He was busy before. He was. Hmm. Um, you went for lunch somewhere interesting. Mm, very cool. Very cool. Very beautiful place. Yeah. Some fancy so, so high society place? No, it's not a fancy high society place. <laughs> I don't know it's where actually, you go. It's, but, but for all I know, you are mixing with high society. How do I know? Uh, no high society. You're very fancy. Here, you know a lot of people. No high society really? for me. No, 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 no. Okay. But, you know, can I tell you, it was so odd. I haven't been out to lunch at that kind of time in a very, very, very long time. So I was quite intrigued to see so many young couples mm. young kind of 30s okay right which of course 30s that's what you do you go out sure. on dates and all sorts of things what not a word and i like watching people mm -hmm. not a word at at least five tables with couples young couples yeah they weren't talking to each other on their phones on their phones. Oh my god, it drives me mad. The one girl, the one girl was actually oh. like posing with her phone like the whole time. Oh, I hate that like, so much. And I was like, I can't stand what is that. happening oh. here? Just they, I had so many questions. I, I actually wanted to to talk to one of them, one of the couples, and I thought maybe they don't know how to talk, mm. but they have phones, so here's the problem is that Again, people think it's really easy to communicate. I mean, you're in the communications business. What? Okay? So people go, oh, well, how can that be a business? Everyone knows how to communicate. I think we've become worse at saying what we mean and meaning what we say. I, I... Because if couples whose express purpose of going out together is, is to, to spend time together. Or to at least get to know each other. Interact meaningfully. And they're busy on their phones. We are not able to do what we it, are programmed to do. This is very bad for the future was, of humanity. It was. Yes, it sir. really, it was so stark. Because they, they oh. really were. And, and they're like funky. They're funky young people. And I was just like, whoa. Like, quite. They taking, and on a Wednesday, right? So they were taking pictures of themselves and taking their food. pictures of the food, yeah. taking pictures of yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're texting or they're just scrolling on social media, but not talking to each other. Yeah, they, they are busy preparing their content for strangers. 
And yet the person that they supposedly want to spend time with. It was bizarre. And for the for the guys, if the you know, it's not just the girls, it's the guys as well who are just as vacuous as this. But if you're a guy and you're paying for lunch and the girl sits there on her phone the whole time and takes pictures of herself and the food, dump her immediately. It was get bizarre. rid of her. Get rid of her. Do not spend a single cent on lunch. Tell her terribly sorry. He has a, a small bottle of mineral water. <laughs> Go on your way. You do not need to waste money on these machoshas. I win. No, really. It's, that's all it is. And same goes for girls. If you're sitting at a table and the guy is busy on his phone the whole time, get up and leave. There is no reason. There's no unbelievably complex, uh, nuanced, uh, indirect. Uh, you don't have to read anything into this. Just get up and go. It was you bizarre. lose nothing. It was bizarre. It really was. And, and these, and these it, by the way, are the people who clearly have money to dress up and go out. Also, in an economy like ours, that's that, that, that if you're lucky, that's the top five percent of the population Baba, on a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday afternoon, it was Wednesday lunchtime. Yes, yes. I was absolutely blown away. I'm like, who are these people? Yeah. Who are these people? Where do they come from? How do they have this money? Because they're obviously not at work. I just, I, I was just leisure, they're at leisure. How, do, but how, how parents' money. They're a bit. They're a bit older than parents' money. Uh, they're a bit older than parents' money. Sheltered employment. I have no idea. But she, sheltered employment, like we've learned from the lady's letter, you still have to show up. You still have to show up for work. But it was just. It was. You know, oh, it man. was. It was such a bizarre thing. It reminded me of a friend of mine years ago, after he got divorced and started dating again. And he was like, I think he went on a couple of like dinner dates and then mm. he decided, no, he's not going on dinner dates anymore. What he's going to do is he's going to go on a coffee date. That way. Yes. It's, get it's away nice quickly. and short. Yeah. <laughs> it, oh, costs yeah. You, it costs you a fraction of the price and, and you, can, you can make your mind up quickly. Listen, I, I, I want to say that I have enormous sympathy for young people who are looking for a relationship yeah. and, and they want to have someone in their life they can really care about. There are people who need a relationship. They're relationship mm. people and they're better in a relationship. I've got friends like that. They're genuinely more balanced, more sensible. <laughs> sensible. They are more, they're more grounded when they're in a relationship, right? I've got guy and girlfriends who are just like, like they're just happier people when they're in a relationship. Oh, wow. And I admire that. I make no distinction in my mind between people who prefer to be single and people who prefer to be in a relationship. They're the same value to me. I don't, not one of those people who's single and then I don't like people in a relationship because <laughs> that's just jealousy. Yeah. And I'm not one of those people who, when I'm in a relationship, I look down on the single people. I'm I'm absolutely objective about this and I have been throughout. I will I'll bring witnesses. Mm. <laughs> but but if you are trying to be in a relationship in 2024, Yay. it's slim pickings. Yay. The chances of meeting someone really valuable who you want to invest time and energy and effort into approaching zero. Mm. It is tough out there, people. And if you want to actually marry someone and have children with them, the stakes are high. <laughs> the stakes are high. I feel for people because if this is what's going on, these are people who have the means that you're talking about at this, this lunch place. These are people who are in a social circle where there is time for social circle stuff. Mm. And they're fucking it up on their phones. It, it, I'm telling you now, it was it's demoralizing right it it really was bizarre mm. i mean i could i could there was one table that had like four girls i can see how those girls are you know mm. i'm like it's all i don't know but these were i was just like oh this is gonna be a long life y'all gonna be a long life listen i've had just the corollary to that is i've seen um, older people who clearly have been married a long time and who now hate each other 
<laughs> I've seen them on their phones or not talking to each other. I mean, before the period of phones, because I also observe people, it's a fun exercise to do. My pillow says in the comments what he likes to do is he likes to look at people and try to like make up the story of what the, what's the backstory. Right, right, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. and then it's a fun game you can play if you're either sitting on your own or you're with someone else and you're like, look at that table there. What do you think the story is there? Do you think she's being paid to be here? Do you think that he's uh, <laughs> he's a loser socially? Uh, you know, he's got no clout. Um, the interesting thing about that observation is that even before phones came along, because a phone is a convenient way for people to look like they're not lonely and alone. So mm -hmm. you'll see people always whip out their phone if they arrive early at a party or uh, they, they're wandering around waiting for somebody. They, the first thing, the, the reflex is to grab the phone so that you're, you're not alone. You've got a digital friend, which is so sad. But before phones came along, <laughs> people still did this. So it's not just a phone thing. That's bad and it's very embarrassing, but it's not just phones. Because I remember seeing at restaurants like in the early 90s, right? So we're talking when I was still at school, you would see couples and they'd sit at a restaurant and they'd look, they wouldn't even look into each other's eyes. They'd kind of look up, mutter something and carry on eating. They were there expressly to eat. They were not there yeah. to be friends. They were not there to share their stories of how the day went, what they were up to. So this happened long before phones. There are wow. still people like that. Wow. And they're all over the place. So Gail Force says, I have a gorgeous friend. She's a female. She moved from Joburg to Cape Town to meet a decent guy. She's still 45 and single. I feel for her. She moved to Cape Town to meet a decent guy. Mm. But, um, yeah, I don't know if Cape Town has this. The one thing I, I think about in Joburg, which other cities in the world, that other cities I've been to in the world have, is they, they, have, they have a nightlife, right? Mm. They, they are places where... You can go to where there's a bar, there's closer. Mm. There's a bar, there's music, it's not too loud. And you can meet a person, right? People come after work or whatever. You there are places like that. Joba kind of not so much, you know? It's either mm. a, a full on club or it's like a sit down restaurant or it's a takeaway place. I don't think you can blame it on venues. There are lots of places that are trying to entertain these bored people. They, they, they're there. There are options. Yeah, but I, but, I, I also but don't it's, think. It's, but what I mean about that is that there is also a bit of a culture in a lot of other places. There's a culture of where people after work will go and hang out at a place mm. for a couple of hours, sure. and then go home or go out to a movie or go and do other things. Whereas we we don't have that kind of culture so much. We have a go to work, go home kind of culture. Grace says three or fours everywhere. Gareth, check out the whatever dating podcast. It is enlightening. Modern dating is tough. And Janae says, my daughter of 16 told me that she would rather grow old alone. Oh no. Boys in school bragging about girls they've slept with and the type of girls they go for. Pumlani says at 37 years old, I understand why Leo DiCaprio rotates them in their 20s. <laughs> Debbie says, thank God, Debbie, standing up for the, uh, the the old school here. I've been married for 20 years, says Debbie. Listen to your show on the radio for many years. Today, found it again. We have no phone at the table policy. My kids will call you out. And I have a teen and a tween. Oh, nice. Good for you. you nice. Yeah, yeah, Boundaries. Like, talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Talk to each other. Develop that skill. Mm. I'm telling you now, you will never be successful if you don't know how to talk to people. Mm. I Speaking of talking to people, I watched an interview yesterday with Larry King where he was being interviewed. And, and he talks about how, for him, just the, the joy of talking to people mm. is what's allowed him to have so much success in his career. You know, just the joy of talking to people and explaining things and really, really fascinating interview. I don't know. Just well, he's dead now, Pumi. I mean, there's no point in bringing up Larry King, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for depressing us, lizard man Larry King. Steve says, touching 60, still single, never married, mm. no kids. It's okay to be alone. It is okay to be alone. Of course it's okay. As long as you're happy. And, and no one can determine that but you. 
and you could also be self-deluded, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> self-deluded. You know, I mean, there are people who convince themselves that something that is not true is true. There are. But I think if you are genuinely unhappy, you're, then you must admit to that and, and, and fix it. Nothing, no point going through life with uh, unhappiness and oh, misery no. and regrets. Oh, no. Uh, get on with it. If, you, if, you, if you're in a situation like Steve where you're, you're approaching 50, 60 years old and you haven't yet got married and you, you think you want to, make the decision. There's so, you know, there's, there's so much happening now in the world that if, you, if you're cool with your own company, you can totally be just absolutely happy, absolutely all right, <laughs> without having the need of like another person. Because you can, because there's just, there's so many things to do. You don't need to entertain or be entertained by someone else. Well, Lukosi says, it doesn't seem like relationships are a thing anymore. And a uh, huge reaction says, you don't have to be in a relationship. Don't feel pressured. Although, in my opinion, it's usually the fair sex who feel the need for relations, body clocks, need for mothering, etc. I don't think that's true. For example, if you look at older women, when their husband dies, they're fine. They're fine. Let's not, please, <laughs> guys, don't get ahead of yourselves. If you die before your wife, she'll be fine. <laughs> Carry on. In fact, a lot of widows who I know are having a much more grand time. Very happy. They don't have this fucking lummox that she that they haul around with them Lummox. and slows them down. And, <laughs> but if the woman dies before the man, yo, that's yo, a pitiful fight. It's a sad situation. So, guys, yes, maybe when you're younger, you feel like you're the one who isn't as needy. Uh, you don't tell me that when you're when you're seventy plus. It's not going to happen. Um, dear Linda says, 63, married for 31 years, got divorced two years ago. I'm living alone. So happy right now. That's me. Love my alone life. Okay, good. Good. No one's uh, saying this is bad. You know, you know what else in the alone life? Mm. You get to pick what is on TV every night. <laughs> you watch TV. Oh. I'm, you I was get reading. To pick, you get to pick what's on TV. You get to pick what's if the TV is on or off. You get when you're reading, when you're, oh man. I'm just saying. Luando says, sad reality. Today we are too much on our phone, forgetting that phones display virtual reality. It looks like we're in love with virtual reality's world ish. Yeah. Um, a lot of people's virtual life is way better than their actual life. That's another sad reality. Like if, you, if you're not experiencing the real world and your Instagram life looks great, that doesn't mean you're happy. And Canton brings up something amazing here. He says, he's listening to us from Harare, by the way, this morning. Uh, a recent study revealed the surprising result. The thing me most men find attractive in a woman is that she's happy. If you're not already a happy person, don't expect me to fix that. This is an amazing thing. And I'm so glad that we can end this hour on a positive note because there are very few things that I find more attractive than someone who's just genuinely ebullient and loves life and is bouncing around every day full of po positivity yeah. and optimism. Yeah. It is a very attractive quality. Yeah. And I know I'm not alone. And there are those people who just have not chosen to be happy mm. in well, their lives. I think... Everyone wants to be around a person like that. Yeah. A person who, who's just joyful. Yes. That's who you want to be around. Yes. It's, that's much lighter energy. Spot on. Being in love and doing life with someone is not a bad thing. Human connection is beautiful. Quite right, Lukosi. Marco says, I love this topic of discussion. Sis Pumi, TV will rot your brain <laughs> with slippery pickle. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, being in love. Yes. Uh, listen, I think that that's beautiful. I think um, if you are happy, you go and do you. When, and Pumi and I are going to have no problem with you at all. If you're unhappy, sort your shit out. Okay? Yay. There's a lot of sympathy here on this show this morning. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> we love you. Well, we have... We're continuing that theme. You see, we're we not do. confined to the 14th of February. <laughs> no, we're not. We can do this even outside of the month of love. 
All right, so coming up in the burning platform next, we're going to talk to the Reverend Kenneth Meshwe, who we've had on the show before, but we haven't spoken to for some time. Mm. I'm excited to speak to him. He will be joining us. Of course, he's the leader of the ACDP, the African Christian Democratic Party. That's coming up next. This is cliffcentral.com. It is a Thursday morning. Up and Adam will be uh, back with a whole lot of very cool stuff next. Don't go anywhere. Up next in the Auto Trader podcast. All right, moving on. So we've got heat seekers here today. Essentially, um, the cars that will be coming out in 2024. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three cars that you think are going to be coming out this year. The first one you gave me was Franks. Why yeah. is Franks going to be kind of a, a hot car this year? The thing is with the Franks, it, it surprised all of us um, when I was there at the launch. And then also I drove it uh, briefly as well while I was in the office. And it's the thing of... How did Suzuki get an entry-level price like this? Yep. The kind of feature set uh. and uh, the drivability and quality and everything in between uh. at that price point of 280k starting. Catch us every Monday at 9 a.m. on YouTube and on autotrader.co.za. fantasy here I am falling down crashing down and I feel like I don't need you here I am falling down deep inside and I feel like I don't need you We are live and it is time for the burning platform. This is where Pumi and I get to talk to, at the moment, the leaders of all the various political parties. Today, we talk to the party, are they sixth or seventh biggest party? I can't remember, but they got four members of parliament, right? Yeah. The ACDP, African Christian Democratic Party. And we are joined by the leader of that party, the Reverend Kenneth Meshwer. Good morning. How are you, sir? <laughs> Good morning, Gareth and Pumi, <clears throat> and all your listeners. Thank you very much for having me on your show. It's always nice to see you, Kenneth Meshwe, and you are uh, looking, you're looking fighting fit. I believe you were in Parliament yesterday, uh, making speeches. Yeah, no, I was asking questions. We Good. are concerned about dirty water we are getting, and some provinces and municipalities have no water altogether. So I wanted mm-hmm. to know what the plan is to ensure that we do not run out of water as South Africans. I think that's an excellent place to start because, you know, so many of our politicians are busy with the, the attention-seeking headlines and the, um, the, 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 the outrageous activities of kind of getting people to talk about them. So they'll say whatever they need to say to get in the news. Um, and And... Things like water are really the things that most people in this country are concerned about. They're not really worried about which politician is grandstanding over an issue. 
this is why I like uh, the fact that you were busy asking questions about water yesterday. How did it go? Well, it went well. I was assured that we now have um, an increasing number of uh, water experts who will ensure that we get clean drinking water. And uh, so we'll see whether they will fulfill what they are saying, because um, we know that they've chased experts in energy. We are having mm -hmm. these problems with uh, ESCOM today because some of the people that were well qualified to an extent that they ensured that South Africa wins the best award when it came to the best uh, power utility in the world in mm -hmm. 2000 and uh, i mean yeah. it was amazing to see south africa beat bigger countries uh, countries that have a bigger economy because we had experts who were in charge of escom and as a result we were given the award of uh, the best power producing utility in the country and so i'm hoping that even with these experts with water that will stop buying bottled water because mm -hmm. our water was once rated as the best. We did not need bottled water, and we are hoping that one day we'll be there again. Well, that would be a great thing, and from your mouth to God's ears and to the politicians' ears, um, and mentioning God is an important part of what your party stands for. So I think let's just start there. The African Christian Democratic Party, you guys started in 1993, and you've been a member of parliament since 1994. You've been re-elected, what, five times already? So this is a long track record. People can now judge you uh, with a with a with a very long track record. Uh, you you believe in certain things that the other parties try not to talk about too much. You believe in moral leadership. Um, you know, a lot of politicians when they hear the word moral, they run for the hills. Uh, you have a different relationship with that word. Is it fair to say that? Well, it, it is fair because integrity cannot exist without morality. There are mm. people who, who say we are leaders of integrity. They use the word integrity very loosely. But mm. the fact is that integrity has within its definition an element and of morality. So it is a good thing, I think, to remind our people that what we are seeing in our communities, the rapes, the murders, the violence and all this, is just showing a lack of morality in the country. People don't seem to know what is right and what is wrong. People don't seem to care about the feelings of their neighbors, the feelings of people around them, which I don't think should be allowed to be entrenched in society. I, I really loved what you were talking about uh, when I was in the backstage, in the mm -hmm. back room. Um, you said something I really liked. I mean, we don't want to be around people who are angry all the time. It's a good yeah. thing to be around people who are happy. And um, yes. If you allow me, I'll say one or two things about that, but I really enjoyed sure. it. Thank you. Sure. Please. Absolutely. No, tell us about that. Tell us why you think that's important. Well, besides telling you what is important, let me tell you what I personally do at the airport. And, and many of the um, ladies be, and gentlemen behind, behind the counters, they know me already. I prefer to be early at the airport and not to be late. So when I'm early enough and there are not too many people behind me in the queue, I stand and look at the counters. Sometimes you'll find there will be five or six people behind the counters and they look at me, okay? Mm. And then I stand and said, I'm waiting to see who has the best smile. <laughs> Okay, I said because I don't want to be served by a person who's moody, who's angry, who's brought their problems to the airport. So, because you are going to make my day a good one or a bad one, so I want a happy person to serve me, and then you'll see them smiling. That's just me, yeah. I just enjoy being around people who are happy because happiness is contagious, just as anger is contagious. Anger is contagious. Totally but agree with you. You know, Dr. Meshwet, I I've often asked myself, South Africa has a almost 80% of the population of South Africa describe themselves, according to the census, as Christians. And and yet you are a one percent party with four seats in parliament. Why do you think it is that? Um, more Christians are not voting for you? What is it that the party is not conveying that uh, gets more Christians to be behind you? There are two basic reasons why we have not done as well as we did. The first one 
is theology in the church, wrong theology. We were taught, I grew up being taught in church, that Christians should not be involved in politics. And this, mm. unfortunately, has been our biggest challenge to try and change the mindset of people that Christians should be uh, member citizens who are hands-on, citizens who are concerned about what's happening in their community, citizens who want to assist in every level of society. Now, when we talk about assisting or being part of every level of society, churches, unfortunately, many of them, they've been excluding politics. Help people, but not politics, because politics is a dirty game. Politics is going to pollute you. Politics is going to destroy your good morals. And by being this long in politics, we have proved to our people that that is not true. You can still maintain your integrity, be whoever you are, be as happy, be as joyful, and be a person of character, strong moral character, and still be human and be in politics. So that we have proved it. This has been the first thing. But secondly, we have had a problem of loyalty. Africans are loyal. Africans are loyal. I read a few years ago, um, it, it's something that brought much more light on why we have not done as well as we should earlier, all right? People in Africa, we are told, political analysts are saying, Africans are loyalists. When they talk about a liberation organization and they talk about an individual being their liberator, they will be so loyal to that liberator. Even when that liberator messes up, they will be so loyal and they will always say, let's give him a chance, let's give him a chance, let's hope, let's give him a chance, let's give him a chance. And these political analysts are saying, it takes an average of 30 years to mm. replace a liberation organization. When people are, are fascinated by a leader, a liberator, they become so loyal that even when they do wrong, they endure hoping that this liberator is definitely going to turn around. But after 30 years, then they realize, no, man, no, 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 no. Things must change. And when you look at what's happening in South Africa today, you see people and you hear people talking about change. People who are always saying, my blood is black, green, and yellow. Now they're no more talking about that kind of blood, okay? They're not talking about changes. We need to try somebody else. The split in political parties, particularly in the majority party, is a clear, clear, clear example and proof of what we are saying now. Now you have people who you'd never, ever guess would oppose the ruling party. Now they are starting their own thing. They are not happy anymore. And we are around the 30 years that we have been told changes will come. So we had right? exactly the 30 years. So yeah. what 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 do you think? What what then? Now that we are at this 30 year mark, what then do you think your chances are going into this election? Chances are very good. That is why I'm so happy, Gareth, for inviting me to your show. And you'll say we spoke about it before it happened. So it is not just a mystery that dropped out of heaven. People are angry. People are upset. It is the 30, year, uh, 30 years that the ruling party has been in power. And the encouraging thing and the nice thing is many of the people who are living disgruntled from the, the liberation organization are saying, let's not try something we have not tried before. Who is Who are the people we can trust? People who have been consistent, people who have not been lying to us, people who have not promised us Mercedes, Benz and cars and fridges and microwaves and did not deliver. And obviously, if you listen to what we've been saying over the years, we have never made impossible promises that we know we cannot keep. So a promise the ACDP makes is a promise we will keep. So we are benefiting in this 30th uh, anniversary of the ruling party, or of the governing party. We are now benefiting from those people who are disgruntled. And many Christians are saying it is now to listen to what the ACDP has been saying and supporting the ACDP. That is why I strongly believe that the results are going to be amazing for the ACDP. What is the ACDP promising? 
if if people have not been listening or not hearing, what is it that the HDDP is? What are your top three priorities? What are you promising? Well, the first priority is eradicating crime, even before corruption, crime. Why? When you talk about investors, investors want to ensure that their lives are safe, their products and properties and assets and other, all other things are safe. We have had in the past investors come into South Africa and they were marked. And some of them, we are told, left immediately. They say, if I am marked and I've come to invest, what guarantee will I have that my family will be safe and I will be safe? So the issue of crime, we cannot live in a country where crime has become part of us. When I'm in my house, when I'm gone and my family, my wife and children are at home, I need to be at peace. Nobody will violate them. When our children go to school, they go to universities, you need to be at peace. I mean, to hear that a, a sixth grade a young boy went with, to school with a gun and shot the headmaster, wanted to, to kill the deputy also and the class, class mm. teacher. All right. It's these are that. things that are happening and it is not normal. So we, number one, have to deal with crime. And that is the priority of the ACDP. Number one, crime. And number two, we have to in, in, uh, attract investors in the country. We want to fight uh, unemployment. And as I said, when you are sure investors that their lives and assets will be safe, number one, and number two, you assure them that the climate for investments and doing business will be good. We will create a climate conducive for business, good business and investments. So you give them that assurance. And then you have policy that will ensure them that government is not going to change their mind that today they say you pay this percentage, now tomorrow they increase it, okay? Policy, there will be policy assurance. Policy that is not going to be changed the way one feels when he wakes up in the morning, all right? So uh, number one is age of crime, number two, um, number two is creating the, the climate in conducive for job creation and for investment. Mm -hmm. And obviously, number three is to ensure that um, we give our children good education. We give our children the, one of the best educations in the world. Okay. So, all right. Uh, can, I, can I ask about education for our children? Because there's a lot of controversy at the moment around this Bella Bill, um, which is all about how the government is insisting on changing education in, in government schools across the country. Some people are very, very upset about this. There are things in that bill which people have a problem with. They say you're not letting children be children, sex education at too young an age. They're basically indoctrinating these kids with all kinds of LGBTQIA plus stuff, which your party has a quite hard line ag against. And I'd like you to explain that. You know, so that people understand your position. Um, Gareth, firstly, we have to agree that uh, education should be the responsibility of the parents. Mm -hmm. Parents cannot be left out of the equation by people who don't have children. All right? It is a difficult thing to see somebody who does not have children and who has children or has children who are dropouts, who are drug addicts, because they could not control their children. They could not raise, they raise their children properly. Saying to you, your child must do one, two, three now, or we will decide what's going to happen to your children. Now, we argue against that. We say before there was a teacher, there was a parent, and the parent knows what is best for their child. So parent organizations, parents uh, and who perform part of the school board on running of the schools must have a voice. Now, the Bella Bill, unfortunately, is giving the minister all the powers to make all the decisions, and we don't agree with that. Parents must be part of decision-making. They must be consulted along the way. And secondly, a school, we believe, has to be an extension of the home. 
A school should not be contrary to what the home is doing. If the home raises a child that will be responsible, we believe that the school should also be part of that, should be part of that. Don't undermine the parents at home, but work with the parents. And this will only be possible if parents are given space and parents are allowed to say something. Now, coming to sex education, I can assure you Many, most of the South African children know about sex than they know about mathematics. And we find this very unfortunate. Uh, many of the teachers or lecturers, African lecturers in South African schools, the majority of them come from Zimbabwe. Okay? Some of the best teach lecturers in our universities are Zimbabweans. Why Zimbabwe focused? on educating and producing the best students. Now, you have people, obviously, sometimes who are saying, these foreigners must go, these foreigners must go, without making a distinction between illegal foreigners and those who are in the country legally, those whose skills South Africa needs. If all our foreigners uh, who are in, in, in universities, lecturers, can leave, our education is going to collapse. It is definitely going to collapse. So the focus, we believe, of, age, of lecturers and of students, of teachers, has to be on empowering children and giving them, making them to be uh, not only great thinkers, but to be only also people of moral standing, a past people who know right from wrong. And not to say children must just decide on their own. So we believe as the ACDP, that you cannot focus more on sex when it comes to children. When right. Zimbabwe and other countries are benefiting their children by teaching them mathematics and looking at what are the international trends, how is Singapore, for example, ensuring that their children are upright, their children, when they know when to start, when to leave, they know that if I have to start my job at 8 o'clock, I arrive 15 minutes early. In some countries, when you are, the time to start, to start your job is not uh, five minutes after 8 o'clock, then you start switching on your computer, waiting for the, no, 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 no. We believe when there is proper <laughs> education and discipline, children and people will know, I have to give my best, I have to give my best energy in everything we do and not how much can I take out of the system. Unfortunately, this is much of would, would it be fair to say that your party, the ACDP, is, is the party for people who have belief in traditional values? You know, um, some ideas that have become quite unfashionable in some parts of society today. You know, the idea that you know the 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 man is the head of the household that uh, religion should uh, should be part of of instruction that you should be moral and 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 have integrity in everything that you do i mean these don't sound like bad ideas to any of us but for many people they sound outdated for some people yeah. they like the idea that people must uh, must be changing their opinion about everything every 15 minutes because the world has changed and there are many people who've discarded so much of this. Do you think your party is the party for those people who are more traditional about these things? Well, I'm one of those men who doesn't want to share his wife with another man. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you have one of those men. Okay. Fair okay. enough. I mean, that's a, that's a basic. I feel I feel like that's a first step to uh, you know uh, people agreeing on things. Yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't like to share my lover with another woman either. Yeah, right. So, Pumi, you have that in common with the Reverend Kenneth Mesh. Oh, right. But the question is, where do we get this from? This is part of um, our bringing up, and this, for me, is part of the influence I got from believing in God. That if you are a man and you are a husband, be faithful to your wife, and the wife must be faithful to the husband. So some people are saying, "No, that's all the tradition. We need to exchange one day with this woman, the next day." I don't agree with that, and I will never agree with that. All right. So the ACDP believes, and I personally also believe that uh, we have to wait. We should not throw the baby with the bathwater. What works? 
And what will make us a better society? Now, South Africans can say, let people do anything they want to do. But when you compare whether there's stability in the country, the safety in the country, you compare them to other African countries, we are, we are lagging behind. So I am, I, I am of the opinion personally that there are many things within our cultures that must be preserved. Because if you're going to throw everything out of the window in the name of times have changed, you will end up not having anything you believe. So there must be things you believe, things you hold on to. And uh, one of the things I also like to say is that people must be strong enough not to be easily influenced, okay? A dead fish will always follow a stream. If the stream goes to the east, a dead fish will go to the east. But when you have a living fish, even though the stream goes to the east, it will go to the west. Why? Because a dead fish is alive. And I am like that. I want to stand for my convictions. I want to stand for what I believe. Now, one of the criticisms against our president, Ramaphosa, Mm -hmm. is that he does not have a, a strong moral backbone, mm. okay? Our or any backbone. backbone. Some, people say, some people say he has no backbone at all. Correct, correct, okay? Okay, he fits well into the group of people who are like dead fish. They look at which stream the water is flowing, and they want to flow that way. So I believe every man should be a man of his values, a man of his convictions. And uh, unfortunately, I can't say my wife now because I lost my wife last year or after 46 years. Now, my wife knew that I can trust my husband. And I knew that I could trust my wife. I would spend time in the parliament in Cape Town. My wife would be in Josie. You know, it did not happen. But imagine somebody would call me. Hey, Rev. You are in Cape Town. You are in Parliament. Your wife is at Sun City with another guy. Somebody that has more money like you. You think I would worry about that? Not at all. Why? Because I trusted her. You know? So to have a good, strong, long-lasting relationship, trust has to be there. And for trust to be there, you need to be a person of good, strong morals and also a good, strong backbone. Because if my friends are playing around with girls mm -hmm. and with women, and I have convictions. I will not do what my friends are doing. So it is important that South Africa be led by men and women of convictions, not men and women who have no backbone because we see their fruits there of today, men and women of strong backbones. Oh, well, look, I think there, there's no denying that you, that you have the convictions that you have, but we, where, where then and how do you reconcile that with the constitution? That, that is the backbone of our country, right? Where, where and where, when do you reconcile those two things where there are differences? Because for a lot of people who might be listening to you now, that there might be places where the two don't meet. And how, how do you then say to South Africans at large who you want to come and vote for you, how do you say you reconcile those two things? You know, when there is respect, it is easy and possible to reconcile those two. All right. Um, a few years ago, I was on a program, I think it was Radio 702, and the question was asked whether we only want Christians to vote for us. And because it was a phone-in program, one of the callers said, I am a Muslim, and yet I'm voting for the ACDP because mm. of their values. Now, one of the strong values that South Africa does not have and you see what's happening in parliament with all the shouting, the booing, and all that remorse. You know, it's people have lost respect. Now, if Pumi, I may disagree with you, but if I respect you and I show my disagreement with you respectfully, we'll remain friends. Okay? There are people who said ACDP obviously does not agree with the LGBTQ plus uh, agenda. Obviously, we don't, but we respect them, okay? In other countries, you hear about how they are being persecuted and doing all these things. Why? Because people don't like them. You'd be surprised. And actually, had I known we were going to talk about this, I would have won a, a talk that was made by a man who's gay, okay? I do not only have friends, but my best tailor is gay. Okay, we don't agree, 
but I respect him and he respects me. We respect each other's uh, opinions. So if South Africans can come to a stage where they respect each other, it would be easy for people to reconcile uh, things as, as Bumi has been asking. Respect is what is lacking so, respect one another. There's someone in the comments um, who, who Congo Chris, he says, he thinks that if the ACDP took power in this country, I mean, that would be, you'd be thrilled if that was the case, uh, Reverend Meshwe. But if the ACDP did become the majority party, would you turn in South Africa into a theocracy? He, that's his concern. Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, when I look at the life of Jesus and I listen to his teachings, uh -huh. Jesus believed in choice a popular scripture in the bible that most people know if you don't mind i will say it shortly okay he said uh, for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him whoever all right he gives people a choice you have a choice to believe in him or a choice not to believe in him so because the one that we believe in we believe in, believed in choice. Freedom of choice will always be part of the ACDP. Now, remember, if I take you back to 2020, okay, uh, hard lockdown, there was a time when the president said, we will not force anybody to take the vaccine. And after a few weeks, the president somersaulted and he started mm -hmm. talking about mandatory vaccines. In parliament, I challenged the president. I said, Mr. President, you know that God who loves everybody does not force any everybody to be saved or to toe the line. He doesn't force. He gives us a choice. So I said, if God gives us a choice, government must also give people a choice. All right, let them know the consequences of their choices. That is good. But don't force people to do what they don't want to do. Give them choices. So ACDP believes in choices, the right to choose. I, I, I promoted that in parliament, and that's the position of the ACDP. We believe in the right to choose. Well, I, I saw a comment here that I thought was interesting from Slippery Pickle, uh, Reverend Meshwe. He says, this is the only man who made a decision to lock down the country and then apologized for his part in it, if for no other reason that makes him better than the rest. <laughs> so I also think that that's a, very, that's a very interesting observation. You know, you did. You said lockdowns did enormous harm. You apologized for your part in it. The rest of them were still waiting for their apologies. Well, <laughs> well true. Even though, even though we did not say we must have lockdown, we, all, we questioned that. We questioned yeah. that. Right? We question that because it is not fair to be told that you cannot visit your family that is in another province. And that's what mm -hmm. happened. We were not allowed to do that. Innocent people were arrested for jogging at the beach, walking their dogs at the beach. They were arrested. Police who should be closing the borders and making sure that criminals don't come in, they were now tracing and following their own citizens. I mean, that was a bad period that we must ensure will never be allowed to, 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 yeah. to recur in South Africa. We must, review. we must refuse to allow another lockdown that caused people their jobs, that caused people their assets, People lost cars, people lost, lost houses, and we don't want to go there again. People must be given a choice. That there was, you know, speaking of choices, by all indications, when South Africans go to the polls later, later this year, on the 29th of March, of May, actually, mm -hmm. um, by all indications, there are going to be coalitions in place because of the number of people that, you know, the polls are telling us the way people are voting. Mm -hmm. When you think about the coalitions, are there any parties that you expressly will not work with or are you open to working with all parties? Mm. Well, if you talk about expressly not work with, the first one is the ANC. Bad company corrupts good morals. All right? <laughs> now, they, they are known, the ANC is known, that they have thieves, they have looters among them, and they don't do anything about them. I think the ANC, 
allowed so many, so much money to be stolen and looted that from what they have, we can, we can uh, eradicate mass, much of the debt that South Africa has. So ANC definitely is a big no-no. And secondly, the EFF also is a big no-no. Do you know what happened at the Agrilene Council this past week? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that For was... days a, now. Wherever you see, wherever you see any council or any legislature uh, having infights, having members of parliament or councillors throwing uh, bottles of water and chairs, the EFF is there. All right. <laughs> now, they have no respect. They have mm. no respect. Mm. And because mm. we are teaching and promoting respect, we unfortunately will not want to work with them. And as I said earlier, bad company corrupts good morals. I have one more question, Dr. Mishra. You were... Just there. one and then what? Yeah, anyway, just then one we're done more. for me. Is that I, it? I, I think just one more question. Oh, look, it, <laughs> may, it may lead to, to more questions, but this... This is something that I, I think um, as we look at our political landscape, one of the things and you spoke about the consistency of the ACDP over the, of the, over the past number of years. Mm. You have been at the head of this organization since inception. You were the inaugural president of the ACDP mm. and have been in parliament representing the ACDP all these years. When is change coming to the leadership of the ACDP? <laughs> Are you still the right person to lead this organization going into the future? Even Moses didn't make it into the promised land. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best people to answer your question are the voters themselves and members of the ACDP. Let me tell you what happened. The ACDP has uh, elective conferences every two to three years, elective conferences. And everybody is allowed, and every branch is allowed to nominate a person for whatever position, including the president. People must, must vote for that. Now, what some people have said, because your question to me is a very popular question. I get it all the time. Are you a lifetime president? Are you, a, you want to do what Robert Mugabe did? I said, no. When you listen to or you, you consider what we said in the beginning when we started the ACDP, I said I have a vision. And that vision is to um, have a godly leadership that will uh, promote godly governance so that there will not be any cheating there will not be any stealing, any looting, and there will not be corruption in government. So I promoted godly leadership. When you listen to all the parties over the years, none of them speaks about godly leadership. Okay, none of them. So our members have said, we believe in godly leadership that we are told will translate into a peaceful and prosperous nation. So people want to see that. So when time comes for them to elect, they say, no, 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 no. This man has not yet finished his job because we don't have a godly leadership in parliament. We don't have a, a government that is promoting peaceful coexistence. All right. I suffered under apartheid, but I don't major on apartheid. Okay. That because when I drive in the car, I don't spend too much time on the rear view mirror looking at what's happening behind me. I look to the front. And any one of us who always looks into the rear view mirror and you don't look forward where you are going to, you are going to crash. You are going to have an accident. So my advice is, even though we can learn from the past, that should not be our major concern. Our major concern should be to build a good, successful, peaceful and prosperous future that will be good for our children. And uh, But the, the flip side of what you're saying to me is that your organization does not have a succession plan. They cannot see anybody else in the leadership of this organization. There are no new ideas. There are no new leaders coming in. And, and so you, you, have, you have not built a, a leadership pipeline. And I mean, even in management books tell us, right, that an organization is in danger if 
the leader of that organization could get hit by a bus mm -hmm. and then there's nobody to replace them. In 30 years, you have not been able to groom more leaders into this organization. That is worrying for me. We, for me, we, we, we have great leaders, okay? Now, when leaders are saying, I still want to choose this man, and I said to the people, I want to save South Africa, and they say, no, this man has served us well. Let's give him another chance. Just like that, maybe after 30 years, it will change. As people have said that parties, liberation parties change every 30 years. Maybe because this is the 30th year, people will say, hi, now let's try somebody else. It might happen because this is the 30th year. But the truth is, and the fact is, people have said, we still believe there's much we can get out of this man. Let us continue with him. That's what they've said. They have the right to choose anytime, anybody. We have leaders. That I'm yes, saying. We yes, Pumi. Yes, stop, Pumi. Stop telling the, the ACDP what to do, Pumi. They can choose their own leader. All right. How dare you? Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, the 30-year the, the, the 30 mark, you know, is, is also because of a generation, right? Is mm -hmm. You now have a generation yeah. of people yeah. Who, yeah. who do not have the same sympathies as the older leadership it's it's also i mean it's sad to think of it this way but it it actually is even if you look at if we use the bible analogy right the children of israel coming out of egypt 40 years because the old people have to die out mm -hmm. in order to be able to move into a future without the sympathies of the past. Mm -hmm. And that's what the 30-year mark is about. It's a new generation of people who don't have those sympathies. Who all What we Can have here in South Africa is we have lots of young people who all they have known over the past 30 years of their life is the ineptitude of the government in power and not necessarily how bad the old government was. So, Reverend, I want to ask you about the practical stuff. So... How important are these small parties? Because you, the Freedom Front Plus, I mean, Patrick says here in the comments, you guys are not looking to run the country, but giving a voice for issues and other parties that, 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 that they don't go on about. Uh, critical for democracy, you're both in the moonshot anywhere, that, that multi-party charter. How important is that to you? Well, a multi-party charter is important to me because you have um, leaders who look into the future and say, if after the elections, we would need to work together as a coalition. What are going to be the guidelines? What are going to be the rules? All right? How are we going to work? When we disagree, how are we going to resolve our differences? And obviously, ACDP is part of this multi party charter, working, mm -hmm. building, and creating a framework for the future. We did not support the Moonshot Pact. Because the Moonshot Pact, as I've said many times, had a headmaster, and we we're all like schoolboys who hear him from the headmaster, all right? But now, the, the, the playing field is level. We are all talking together as leaders who are concerned and um, leading different agendas and programs. There is an alternation. Of leaders. It's not one person dictating terms. It's not one person leading, but it's different persons within this multi-party charter who are given opportunities to lead, opportunities to do one, two, three. But this working together is so good that I believe when the time comes to form a coalition uh, by the opposition parties, we will have good material from to choose from, and we will be having good foundational principles and policies that will ensure that this multi-party charter will definitely work. Okay, well, I mean, we've been we've been talking a lot about kind of the the, the rest of the, the the political landscape, and we've spoken to a lot of leaders over the last few weeks. Um, there are parties that you said you won't join up with, you won't work with the ANC. How strong a role do you think the new MK party are going to play in the future of KZN and also of the country? And what do you make of of uh, former President Jacob Zuma's support for them? Well, MK Party, I think, um, is helping to reduce the ANC to size, cut the ANC to size. That is a positive. Mm -hmm. What I don't appreciate with the MK Party is their threats. Um, for anybody, as the MK Party has done, anybody to say, 
if we do not get a two-thirds majority, there will be chaos in the country. That the ACDP does not approve, does not agree with. And if an opportunity arises for me to meet with the leadership of the MK party, I would prevail on them. Please mind your language. We do not want people to prepare themselves for the worst, to prepare themselves for violence. Now, if they can mind their language and they stop saying there will be chaos in the country, we don't need chaos. We need to rebuild South Africa. We must rebuild this country. Fighting destroys countries. We see what Sudan is like. We see a number of countries on the African continent that have not developed. Why? Because they have been fighting, 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 fighting all the time. It is time, I believe, to build the new South Africa, to build this South Africa we love and appreciate our only home. It's South Africa, a country that I believe is one of the best, if not the best in the world. People who travel, including myself, you go overseas, go to Australia, go to America. And when I come back, I marvel. I say, hey, we have a beautiful country. We have a wonderful country. So political parties should work towards building this beautiful country we have so that what many tourists have been saying over the years, will continue, will not be lost. And what have tourists been saying about South Africa? Many of them are saying, South Africans are wonderful people. They are very mm -hmm. nice people. We so, appreciate the way we are received in South Africa. This is the South Africa we want to build, not the South Africa of fighters fighting all the time, even over small things. So, fighters. so uh, just to, to Pumi's question earlier about how you've led the ACDP for 30 years. I mean, Matthew says Mark Zuckerberg is still the leader of Facebook. So, I mean, it's not a problem. Um, and then Carl wants Facebook us to ask you. Facebook is hardly a teenager. Carl, Carl thinks I've been very soft on you. Um, are you a socialist or a capitalist, a free marketer or a communist? A real question he once asked. <laughs> Calm down, Carl. What do you say to that, <laughs> Reverend Meshwe? You, When it comes to economic policy? Well, we are definitely free marketers, okay? okay. We, yeah, we are definitely unapologetically free marketers. Mm -hmm. We believe that um, free marketers should also have a conscience, okay? A social conscience. We believe we have a responsibility not to close our eyes to the suffering, but we are definitely free marketers. You cannot be able to give anything you don't have. Now, the socialists, unfortunately, they want to consume everything and afterwards they have nothing to share anymore. But free marketers, we say, no, <laughs> let everybody work hard let everybody be productive so that we'll be able, we'll have enough to share with others. And then Congo Chris also getting very fiery in the comments here. What does the ACDP propose to do to address rising levels of Christian nationalism? Do you think Christian nationalism is a problem in South Africa? Or is this just something that we hear in American, um, you know, in the American left when they're too worried think, about local and, yeah. and national terrorism? It is something we hear in America and other places, not in South Africa. South African Christians have been very uh, understanding, in some cases even tolerant. And as I say, we have people we disagree with, and I have people I disagree with who are my friends. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to change. I want people who disagree with me to be my friends and people I disagree with to also continue to be my friend. So, uh, Christian nationalism, I don't see the rise of it in South Africa. Not yet. I don't see it. Thank you. All right. Well, um, you know what, Reverend, people may say that we've given you a bit of an easy ride here today. But for those people <laughs> in South mean, Africa, Gareth? no, what I do don't. Well, you know, I don't have any, I really don't have uh, any issues with any of the things that you've said. I've got to be honest with you. And I'm, I'm not a, a religious person. I'm not a Christian I, person. But. But as far as I'm concerned, like for those people who are looking for someone who's not interested in just conflict and noise and mm -hmm. blowhard statements about ideology, I think you're an attractive candidate to those people. And I think that there are a lot of people who also can look at your track record and go, well, there's 30 years of this guy saying what he thinks, doing what he says. I don't, I don't suppose there's too much I can, I can take issue with there. I mean... I would say if there was, uh, and and you and I have had disagreements about minor things over the years, but honestly, it's not worth bringing them up. Look, and the, and and again, you know, the the thing about a 
an election year like we have now is all the parties have an opportunity to put out what their policies are to re refresh yeah hit the refresh button and i saw a couple of days ago that um i think news 24 are launching a, a, a which i'm going to love playing around with is they are actually launching a manifesto um she check sheet right that puts up all of the various parties mm. next to each other it's an interactive form that you can look in you know so you can go and put in policy what economic policy and it will tell you what the different parties next to each other what their economic policies look like and what they're right. looking at and i i think i mean those things unfortunately not a lot of people read through all of this only stuff, you for me only you no, but it's it's important. It, it's important, particularly when there are so many people on the ballot, and I think we're going to have the biggest ballot that we have ever had. Mm -hmm. And it's important to to be aware of what the things that you agree with and the things that you don't agree with with different parties, and who you give your vote to this year so is going to be. Every year, it is important. Every time there is an election, who you give your vote to is important. But it, I think, this year more than ever individuals need to be sure that who they give their vote to is somebody that corresponds with what they believe in. So that some of the temperature, some of the, the heat that we see and the frustration is alleviated by that. Which which provinces are your best provinces in the ACDP? Gareth, in case I forget, allow me to say one of the sure. main reasons why I, I am... I admire you as a man, is that um, you are level-headed, even though you are not a religious person, you are tolerant. And I appreciate the fact that Sometimes. you did not come with the hammers <laughs> and the other guys. Yeah? The hammers <laughs> and the other guys that says, I'm going to nail this guy. You just say, I want to know what well, this guy has. To, and I like well, that and I appreciate that. That has listen. been you. You are it's, so it's, original. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. But you know what? It's it's Pumi's point as well. We were talking about this earlier. We we don't bring people on the show to interrogate and tear them to pieces. <laughs> as much as that would make for great ratings, and there are people who are bloodthirsty who want to hear that kind of thing. I think it's yeah. just about hearing the ideas. Um, where is where is the ACDP's center of power? Where do you guys do the best when it comes to the country? Well, three provinces, uh, Gareth. Uh, Gauteng, uh, Western Cape, and uh, KZN. That's where okay. we have been doing best. And also Limpopo is on the hills. Yeah, mainly this. All right. Is, yeah. And and are there any wards and municipalities where you guys have a significant amount of control that you're looking to up that this this coming election? Not not really. Not really. If you talk about municipalities that we control, we don't control any municipality. We have uh, councillors in different municipalities who are in different councils. Um, we had uh, some in Gauteng who were MMC, who had MMC positions when there was still better stability in the councils. Now we have remorse in councils. But um, <laughs> one of the most important things that um, it has been the reason why we did not participate in by-elections, for example, because uh, that question has is being asked time and again. ACDP does not have a funder or a sponsor because we are paying a high price for our convictions, all right? Now, mm -hmm. I said, to our guys, we cannot be bought with money because when people give you a lot of money, obviously they want something, a piece of the cake, okay? I'm giving you this money, but I expect you to promote this agenda. We don't want to do that because we don't want to Prom to, to go against the mandate that our voters have given us. So because of these convictions and people say, no, he still holds on to this old, old fashioned traditional values. No, we are not going to support him. Fine. That's the price we are paying. But I'm showing South Africans and there is it be showing for us, South Africans. Whether we are given the opportunity to govern or not, we are people of conviction. We believe if people follow our values, if the country embraces what the ACP is saying, we are going to produce children. We will produce children who will not attack and rape their own parents. Children who will respect their parents, who love their children, which is something we want to see. 
to see a country where children are children and where adults are adults, where respect, talking about the respect, I respect my children. I respect my children. Somebody once challenged me when they had me call my son, say, okay? Refer to him as say, my son, my own son, okay? let say, why? I say, I'm teaching my son respect. And then you have some ladies, uh, my children who say to them, madam, and they say, hey, I'm not a madam. You make me old. I say, no, you are old already. If you're old or you're old, <laughs> madam is not going to be, make you younger or, or older. But that is one way of saying to people in society, we must respect each other. We must respect elderly people. So that is the ACDP. And um, there will come a time when people are saying, about, we have tried everything. We have tried about everything. A, how about a prison just for, for corrupt politicians? That, that would be a nice thing to see in the manifesto. 100%. A new prison. I Christians for 100%. Okay, Let's put good. them in jail. <laughs> that, that, I'm, now I'm with you. Now I'm starting to feel I, I Okay, so I do have a, exactly one more question. Go ahead. Pumpkin. Rev, you did say that you, you, you foresee that you're going to gain from all the disillusionment that people have with all the parties that that have not been representing them well. So if you were to make a prediction, how much do you think the ACDP is going to grow in the next election? Mm. Are you going to increase the number of seats that you've got in parliament? And if so, by how much? Hey, now, now that, that's a difficult one for how much, okay? That's a difficult one. But <clears throat> I can talk about my wish that we will definitely more than treble. We, I would be upset. <laughs> and I'll come for, to you for comfort. Pumi and Gareth, I'll come to you for comfort. If I am, I, I'm so upset. Oh, but you have the greatest comforter. You don't need us. <laughs> yes. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, you have a greater <laughs> comforter than us. <laughs> if, no, if, if, if what? If what? You're great. Okay. If I get anything less than 20, and I would be very upset. Mm. I would be upset. Mm. And I, I'm serious. And obviously, mm. if I get more than 2,000, we are going to celebrate together. I don't like cake, but I'll bring cake that Gareth and Pumi who gave me this opportunity. Where are you? I love cake. <laughs> where are you? Where are you campaigning? Uh, are you are you going to be all over the country? No, I'm going to be all over the country. I'm expected all over, and I must appear all over. So I'll definitely be all over the country. All right. Well, we wish you luck, uh, Reverend Kenneth Meshwe. It's, it's great to talk to you. I know we haven't spoken to you in some time. Let's not let it be so long until the next time we talk. I and agree. With best you. of luck. I mean, we say to good every luck. everybody, good luck. Uh, we, we hope that uh, that many people turn out for this election. Many more have registered. We've got the highest registrations we've ever had in South Africa for an election. So things are looking competitive. And I think there are there are lots of uh, issues on the table. People have a lot at stake. We'll be watching when those. Uh, we will be watching when the results come out. I hope you get your twenty seats. And I hope you vote for, for ACDP also. Let me let me just throw this lastly. I we need votes from everybody, including the journalists who are interrogating us, the journalists who are giving us a hard time. We also <laughs> expect them after evaluating everybody will say evaluating we say, this PTPT. <laughs> <laughs> evaluating <laughs> this PTPT. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Reverend. Have an excellent day and a good week. Thank you very much, Gareth, and thank you very much, Pumi. It was great spending this hour with you. It Good. was wonderful having you on. So if the Reverend gets his 20 seats, the one thing that we can be sure of is, is a lot more respect and collegiality. Yes. In that, Which uh, would be nice, actually, considering yeah. what we saw in the Eastern Cape last week with the EFF when and the Etekwini and Ekuruleni. So if the Reverend gets his 20 seats, mm -hmm. uh, we can expect a whole lot more grown-ups, I hope, like well, the Ref. Yeah, if you stop being ageist, I saw, I saw our friend Soli Mueng who joined in the conversation. He said the obsession with age is bad, but Soli is also because we're getting older. Uh, Mandela was a great leader at seventy-two to seventy-four. Compare him with a relatively young Malema. If age were the only criterion, people would go for him at great cost to South Africa. Age is is it's actually not an obsession with age. Okay. It really is an obsession with ideas and the longevity of those ideas. 
I think I I think we really really could benefit and and bright ideas new ideas refreshing ideas are not the preserve of the young no mm. they're not but for people who've been in a position for 30 years maybe it's time to accept that that your level of efficacy may not be at its best we'll leave it at that pums some hard criticism and uh congo chris agrees with you he said uh, we could have gone with more tough questions like the one about succession. Well, you asked it. So I, don't, I don't know what you want, Congo, Chris. What do you want us to do? <laughs> tit feed your baby. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's all the time we've got for today. Did we you will. Say tit feed? I said tit feed your baby. Congo, Chris, take that to the, uh, the shops. I'm not looking for your vote. I could care less. I will see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye.